Um, but here we are now in the space of recording. Shh, 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 shh. Could we? We could, I guess. Um, so, um, what's the deal, guys? Well, let's think about what the deal is. The deal is that you've learned about sine and cosine, but now you're learning about tangent. So, tangent, opposite adjacent, tangent, opposite. For the record, I've listened to that song now like 12 times. Yeah, and it gets better every time, um, in case you want to watch it again. Um, so, sh 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 so here we have our triangle, we have our opposite side, our adjacent side, we have our angle. You guys remember this, I think. Um, this little diagram thingy here. Um, and I can change my angle, right? I've got my opposite and adjacent. Here's my cosine, sine, and here's my tangent ratio. Tangent is the ratio of opposite over adjacent. And so you see that as I change my angle, my tangent changes. So look, as my angle gets smaller, look, the opposite side gets smaller. You see that? The opposite gets smaller, the adjacent gets bigger, right? So my ratio of opposite over adjacent, for here the opposite is 0.275, adjacent is 0.961, so it's 0.275 over 0.961, which is 0.286. But as my angle gets smaller and smaller, look what happens. The tangent gets closer and closer to what? Zero. Zero, that's right. Because eventually the opposite side is zero, and so opposite over adjacent will be zero over one, um, and it will be zero. But then as my angle gets bigger, look at my tangent. Look, it starts kind of just getting bigger gradually. You see 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 7, 8. Then it starts getting bigger rapidly, one. Then look, two, three, four. You see, and now it's like seven, nine. You see how it's getting much bigger now? 1928 all of a sudden, right? Until it gets 90. Now look, here the opposite is 0.999, the adjacent is 0 0.034. What's the adjacent side getting closer to? The adjacent side is getting closer to what? Zero, and the opposite side is getting closer to one, which means opposite over adjacent would be one over zero. But what's one divided by zero? Zero over one is zero, but zero, one over zero is undefined. You can't divide by zero, right? But before I get to that point, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If something gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's going to, it's going to infinity. It gets bigger and bigger, it gets to infinity. So as my angle gets smaller, tangent goes to zero. As it gets bigger and close to 90, tangent goes to infinity. And so if we want to take a look at it, we want to take a look at it. Um, I will graph tangent for you. The tangent function looks different than the sine and cosine. It looks like this. See? Whoa. What was that? That's weird. Oh, that's why. So the tangent function looks like this. 360, there you go, negative 360, take a look. So, look, you can't really see it, it's kind of hard to see, but at zero at zero, right, the tangent function does this kind of weird thing, right? As it gets closer and closer to 90, look what's happening, it gets bigger and bigger, right? So it never quite is equal to 90 because at 90 it's undefined, which means that there's this line that exists at 90 where no matter how high you get, it never touches it. And I'll show you if I make y 100. Look. Look at that. 
You see, even though it's getting really high, it never quite touches that line, right? What do I call a line that a graph gets closer and closer to but never touches? Asymptote. Good job. Asymptote. Asymptote. It's an asymptote. It never touches that line. So that's the tangent function. You guys got that? Does that make sense? Clear? That's the tangent function. That's what it looks like. It starts at zero. It goes up to um, infinity as it gets closer and closer to 90. Now, last thing about the tangent function, look. At 45 degrees, what's the opposite side? Opposite side is what? 0707. And the adjacent side is what? 0707. There you go. So opposite <laughs> over adjacent, if they're the same thing, the tangent ratio should be what? 1. Yeah, it says 0.99 here. I don't know why. But it's because it should be 1. Okay, so at 45 degrees, it's 1. At 0, the tangent of 0 is 0. The tangent of 45 degrees is 1. And the tangent of 90 is undefined, okay? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Is that pretty clear? Okay. So now I'd like you guys to take a look. It's in a book reading. Um, at this worksheet, the tangent ratio worksheet that I've given you, it looks like this. Okay? So pull it out now. This is your homework for tonight. Okay? And we'll take a look at number two and number four. So this is exactly like what you've done before, except now we're working with tangent. So the first thing's first. You identify your angle. Here's the angle C. Then you identify your sides, right? Opposite the right angle is hypotenuse. Opposite my angle, remember... Oh, okay, I'm going to play that part of that song again. Yeah, I yeah. Look, this is the best part of the song right here, clearly. So everyone pay attention. Right? See? So you pick one side and look, there's the opposite, right? So um, this is the greatest thing created on planet Earth. I don't know about that, but that's... <laughs> All right, so, so imagine that your angle is like an eyeball, and you're looking, and it's like, oh, look, there's the opposite. So that's opposite. And then the other one is the adjacent, okay? All right, so the tangent of C is equal to the opposite over adjacent, TOA, okay, is in this case 21 over 28. Okay, can I simplify that? 21 over 28? No. Five, seven. yeah, good, seven. So it equals three over four. That's your answer, done. Next one, tangent of x. Here's my angle. First I find my hypotenuse. It's always opposite the right angle, so it's easiest to find. Then I pick one angle and look. You see, that's the opposite. Look, that's the opposite. And the other side's the adjacent. So tangent of x is opposite over adjacent, or 27 over 36. What's the simplifying factor here? Greatest common factor of 27 and 36 is? Nine. Good. Nine. So I divide the top and bottom by nine. I get three over four. Bam. Just like that. Okay. Now, once I've done that, those are how to do those kinds of problems. And then on the back of your worksheet, we start getting into more types of questions. So I'm going to do 8 and 10 for you. Like I said, the rest of this will be your homework, but I'll do these for you. So first thing, whenever you've got a triangle like this, you identify your angle and then you figure out what sides you've got. Well, this is clearly the opposite because it's opposite the angle. 
and this one's the adjacent side. It's not the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. So I've got opposite and adjacent. Since I've got opposite and adjacent, I know I'm using which trigonometric function? Tangent, because TOA, TOA, to and opposite over adjacent. By the way, guys, I know you've noticed it, but this little handout here has got everything on there right there for you. Okay, so it makes it easy. All right, so what do we get? That the tangent of 48 degrees equals opposite over adjacent, which in this case is x over 15. Now to solve for x, what do I do? Very good. Multiply both sides by 15. And I end up with x equals 15 tangent of 48. Now, I've got that, but what do I have to do now? I have to get the tangent of 48. Very good. Now, if you guys don't have a scientific calculator yet, you need to get one, okay? You've got to have a scientific calculator um, now, basically. So you've got to get one because you're not going to be able to use phones. So x equals 15 times 1.11, or take that answer, multiply it by 15. I get 16.659. That's my answer. I check for reasonableness. I see, yeah, if this is 15, this could easily be 16.659. Cool. Any questions on that? All right. Next, I look, I identify my angle. From there, I identify my sides. Pick one angle and look. The other side's the opposite. There you go. There you go. There's my opposite. Opposite. And then adjacent. So I've got tangent again. Very good. Thank you. Tan so tangent of 47 equals opposite, which is 19, over adjacent, which is x. Now, I want to solve for x. What do I do this time? Multiply by x. I have to multiply by x because it gets it out of the denominator. So I multiply both sides by x. And I end up with x times tangent of 47 equals 19. Now what do I do? By. Very good. Very good. Divide by tangent of 47. And I end up with x equals 19 over tangent of 47. Or figured out my calculator. What's tangent of 47? 1.072. So it's 19 over 1.072, which equals. 17.7, 17 17.7, 17 18, sure. Okay, there you go. Is that reasonable? Sure. If this is 19, that could be 17.7, Any questions on that? No? All right, simple stuff, right? We've done this before with sine and cosine. So maybe you can see why I didn't bother with doing like tangent and sine and cosine all at once. It's just once you know sine and cosine, the tangent is simple to get. So, um, cool. Any questions? All right, now, um, that's the simple stuff, and you guys should basically have a pretty good mastery over it at this point because you've already been quizzed on it. Yes, sir. Can I calculate it or like give me a different option? Yeah, it's because you're in writing. So, you're going to go to mode, see how you're in writing. All right, so everyone take a look at this beautiful handout right here now with all the pretty words on it. All right. Now, for the record, guys, your homework, class, your homework is this worksheet, finishing this worksheet. All right. So that was your homework is finishing that worksheet. Um,
Now, this is not your homework, but I want you guys to get some work on done on it uh, in class today. So, um, a lot of questions, guys, if you remember, like, your last test, there was a lot of more complex questions and not very many, just simple ones. That's how the next test is going to be. It's going to be next week. Um, yeah, you'll have some basic stuff like what we just went over, but a lot of things will be application style questions and word problems. All right? So let's take a look at this one. Um, and you're going to be expected to just have just like this and figure it out. So let's say you're like walking down the street one day and someone just comes up to you and is like, hey, listen, man, uh, I've got a question for you. And you're like, you know, I, I don't know you, but like, you know, I'll, I'll answer your question. And he says, hey, look, a boy flying a kite lets out 300 feet of string, which makes an angle of 38 degrees with the ground. Assuming that the string is straight, how high above the ground is the kite? 27 degrees. And he just wants to know, and you feel obliged, and you're like, you know, the cool thing is, I know trigonometry, so I can help you out, right? So how do you start, right? Well, you just so happen to have a little moleskine and a pen with you. And anyone know what a moleskine is? It's like a little notebook. It's like a moleskin, anyway. It's like, a, it's like super... Anyway, um, so you have your little pad of paper and a pencil with you. So you're like, hey, man, I got you. Let me, let me just uh, draw a picture. And so here, this is your boy right here. And he's flying a kite. So here's his string. Bam. There's the kite, right? And then you start saying to yourself, well, what do I know? What do I know about this? Right? 300 feet of string. 300 feet of string. So bam. There you go. 300 feet of string at a 38 degree angle. Okay. And then what are you trying to solve for? The height. The height. We'll call it X. If I continue this line out, bam. Got myself a nice right triangle. Bada bing, bada boom. So if I've got to solve for X, right? First thing, I identify my angle. Then I identify my sides. Pick one angle and look. That's the opposite. That side's the opposite. And this would be adjacent. This is opposite the right angle, so that's hypotenuse. So then I ask myself, okay, which trigonometric ratio do we use? If we got opposite and hypotenuse, I use Sokatoa, 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 sine. Sine. So I use the sine, not the sin, but the sine of x over, I'm sorry, the sine of 38 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, which is x over 300. Okay, just like that. And then multiply both sides by 300. And I get x equals 300 times sine of 38 degrees. I go into my handy dandy calculator. I get the sine of 38 is 0.616. So x equals 300 times 0.616. I get x equals 0.6. Or 184.7 feet. Just like that. I then should check for reasonableness. Could that be 184.7 feet? Sure could. If I got like 10 feet, I'd be like, hmm, if I got 3,000 feet, I'd be like, hmm, 184 feet. Sure. You still might have made a mistake, but at least your answer, answer is reasonable. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, cool. So that height, that height is 185 feet off the ground. There you go, just like that. Now, um, for the rest of the hour, I want you guys, um, I would say work on this one, but um, yeah, work on this one. Work on this one. So you can work in groups if you'd like, but work on the word problems, okay? Because this is the kind of thing that having the individual practice really helps, and this is the time where I'm here to help you. So 
Um, work on the work, word problems. You can work in groups if you want. You can work by yourself. It's fine. Um, but that's that. Your homework is the first worksheet. Any questions? Yeah, sure. All right. That's the end of the lesson. Good job, class.